Hello everyone. In the previous video, we discussed about metamorphism and seg segmentation. We also discussed a little bit about uh, tagmatization in the previous video. In this video, we are going to focus on cephalization. And to start with, let us start by understanding what is cephalization. Cephalization is actually the concentration of nervous tissue towards one end in any organism. So, concentration of nervous tissue towards one end in, in any organism brings also brings the sensory organs to one end because sensory organs mo most the most part of a sensory organs is ca is comprised of nervous system only because sensory organs has the uh, receptor cells which start with nervous system only and then it brings that to the brain so sensory organs also get accumulated or shifts towards one side in an organism and this process is called as cephalization. So let us write a definition of cephalization over here. So cephalization is considered as an evolutionary trend whereby nervous tissue over many generations becomes concentrated towards one end of an organism. This pro process eventually produces a head region with sensory organs. Okay. Another question that many people ask is that why is cephalization uh, uh, connected with bilateral symmetry? It is found that most cephalized organisms have bilateral symmetry and those which don't have bilateral symmetry, which have radial symmetry, do not have cephalization. Why is that so? What is the connection between both of them? Let us look at it. First of all, let's have an organism which is radially symmetric. Okay. So, these lines over here represent the nerve, nerve neurons. Okay. So, they are one below the another neurons and it forms a nerve net type of structure and it is found in primitive organisms like hydra and i have drawn the organism in a circle because a circle is a radially symmetric figure okay so let us try to bring the analogy through this small comparison okay understand it through the small comparison you can see in this figure that it has this type of um, a nerve net type of arrangement in the nervous tissue here the nervous tissue is not concentrated towards any end so the organism is not cephalized and it is radially symmetric now let us see what happens when the organism starts to show cephalization so i will start to draw a picture over here so something like this happens you can see this type i have tried to draw a brain over here and this is a burnt collection of uh, millions of neurons uh, according to the complexity of the organism so this is a bundle of a lot of nervous tissue has concentrated towards one side and then you can see like that the peripheral nervous tissue has developed and so why has this organism developed a bilateral symmetry right now let us try to imagine uh, let us try to figure it out over here this uncephalized organism we can divide it into two equal halves through any plane provided that it passes through the center okay so we can divide it through any plane because it is radially symmetric it is a circular type of figure okay and but in this figure as we have seen as we see that the cephalization has occurred we have seen we see that formation of a, a primitive brain type of okay we can divide it into two equal halves through this plane only okay why not through this plane? Because here you can see the brain over here in this half. In this half there is no brain. Now you may say that the brain is an internal structure and there this planes of symmetry is based on external appearance only. Yes, you are absolutely right. To give, if you don't understand what I am saying, this is that we are bilateral symmetrical organisms, right? But still, if we see the internal, our internal physiology, internal anatomy, you will find that our heart is shifted towards one side, our liver is towards one side, our pancreas. We will not find a perfectly bilaterally symmetrical structure. But on the outside, we have two hands, we have two eyes, which is just a bilateral symmetrical organization. So, we do not look at the anatomy for any bilateral for any finding out the plane of symmetry and here i am saying that the, we are looking at the brain and the brain is not visible from the outside well you are right but you should consider the fact that along with the concentration of nervous tissue towards one side we have the concentration of sensory organs towards one side and that means that 
the eyes, the ears are also concentrated towards this side and this develops an anterior end towards this side and then posterior end towards this side. Okay, and now I will say that the eyes are over here which is externally visible and the eyes are not over here. So, you cannot divide it with this type of plane of symmetry. So, it is not possible. So, so this creates a anterior posterior end. So, this end is anterior end okay, or the what we say the the anterior end let me this is the anterior end of the organism and we get the formation of a posterior end too and these anterior and posterior ends are not the same and therefore we cannot divide it through any plane and therefore it is not really radially symmetric it is bilaterally symmetric therefore we find that civilization causes the organism to become bilaterally symmetric and bilaterally symmetry is a very advanced form of symmetry it is, it is a very developed form of symmetry therefore we conclude so this is the posterior end okay and now another thing is that many people think that Cephalization along with the concentration of nervous tissue is also the development of head. Okay, so development of a distinct head structure. But it, to, just to make it clear that cephalization is not at all related to development of head. It is just concerned with the concentration of nervous tissue or the uh, nervous concentration of nervous tissue towards one side. It is not at all related to development of head but why it is found that development of head is occurs along with the process of the cephalization and why is that so let us look at it a head develops due to the creeping nature of animals believe it or not but an animal always tries to hide itself so that it uh, so that if it is trying to catch a prey the prey doesn't get alerted of its presence and it can wait over here as you can see in this picture it is uh, it is uh, looking like a cat which is hiding against a wall anyways it can wait and then just wait for the correct moment and therefore the head which contains all the sensory organs that is the ears the eyes the mouth all these okay help the organism so cephalization is advantageous like that also and therefore the cephalization all proceeds along with the development of head but cephalization is not related with development of head okay, so what is another advantage of cephalization okay cephalization has advantages concentrated nervous tissue is very very much essential for any organism because if we find that the nervous tissue is scattered all around then the communication between two different parts is very difficult why is that so let me try to explain through a picture so in any uncephalized organism you can see that the neurons anyways whatever you say that nervous system is always a collection of neurons so in uncephalized organism you can see that the neurons are connected end to end like this and the, since it is not the uh, nervous tissue is not concentrated we find that the neurons are connected end to end like this when cephalization occurs something like this occurs the nervous tissue gets concentrated and something like this occurs that there are more interneural connections the neurons and the neurons are just not laid down end to end now as they are getting concentrated more neurons have to be packed into one one specific volume and therefore the interneuron connections are getting increased and therefore due to this the uh, uh, ability to communicate or the communication between the neurons is also increasing which is actually increasing the complexity of organism and helping it to uh, evolve more so i hope they i give you the advantages of the having cephalized advantages of cephalization which is which is true that is first of all the creeping nature which is quite hilarious anyways the creeping nature which allows the organism to uh, hide behind any hide most of its body behind any behind anything and just wait for the correct moment to uh, attack its prey most of the times and then due to the concentration of neurons towards one 
at one side we are getting more formation of more interneural interneurons or more synapses okay so we are getting the formation of more synapses which are actually increasing the complexity of the organism and helping the organism ultimately so that was the advantages of cephalization now let us look at the how the cephalization is evolving along along across the phylums okay so let us see so here we have the hydra uh, representative from the phylum nidaria uh, it has the nerve net type of ar arrangement as you can see over here and it has very little amount of cephalization we can say that it has cephalization because it has some photoreceptive cells on the uh, on the mouth area it has the mouth over here and it has also got some uh, motor neurons okay over here because the hydra can move its tentacles right so it has motor neurons over here so it has a little bit of uh, so very small amount of cephalization but a real cephalization occurs in the flat worms that is the phylum platyhelminthus it is this is the picture of planaria okay here you can see that uh, planaria contains two photo uh, sensitive areas it can it can sense the presence of light or the absence of light it cannot distinguish between lights lights because it is very primitive it has got two pinnae okay so it has primitive ears too and you can see that the brain is starting uh, or the nervous tissue is how the nervous tissue is getting concentrated towards one side over here in these two blobs you can see over here how the nervous tissue is getting concentrated towards one side okay and now the head is also starting to pinch out you can see the head is starting to develop it has not developed at all till now anyways this is the file uh, this is phylum nematoda okay you can do, don't focus on this format sperm, sperm duct or gut okay uh, look at the nervous part, nervous tissue uh, nervous system parts that is the brain it starts it is starting to develop you can see the ventral nerve cord is going like that anyways that was a uh, nematoda then we have earthworm it has got the cephalization right over here the brain is starting to get more complex okay and let's move on forward first we see the process uh, head develop in the phylum arthropoda okay here you can see the head has started and the, the head has just uh, developed completely we can distinguish the head structure and this has developed due to the process of tagmatization which i had discussed in the previous video you, you can check it out and just to uh, summarize the process of tragmatization is the fusion of metamers you can see that it has got the cerebral ganglion which is actually uh, analogous to the brain okay and then and the nervous tissue goes as it, as usual and this is the phylum mollusca but another point to mention over here is that in the phylum echinodermata we suggest, suddenly lose the uh, what we say suddenly lose the cephalization trend we find that we have the radially symmetrical organism and we find that the nerve nervous tissue is most concentrated over to over here right over in the central portion this is where the nervous tissue is mo most concentrated and this is not towards any end it is in the center and therefore it is not cephalized it is an uncephalized organism and it is a uh, simultaneously it has also lost the bilaterally symmetrical appearance okay so you can see over here which proves that bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry is connected to cephalization anyways again in the core data we find again that bilateral symmetry has come back and cephalization also has happened and there's the brain which is quite developed brain right over here this looks like a lizard anyways and this is the spinal cord in core data we define the development of the the vertebral column to protect the spinal cord anyways the spinal cord has developed and that is how the cephalization occurs if you like the video please give it a thumbs up below okay please uh, comment subscribe and see you in the next video bye